to update the prayer list. you to join me in this morning's liturgy. Creator God, you call us to hospitality, to give as generously to others as you have given to us. For there are angels among us. Loving God, you call us to give you glory in the compassion we show to one another, to love without judgment of ourselves or of others. We gather as one body, Seeking to walk in the way you have set for us, we gather as one body to worship the one who is love. Amen. Thank you. 
You're so tired you can't even talk. You are tired. You're so tired you can't even talk. <coughs> well, goodness. Well, Miss Barbie will do all the talking. How about that? Okay. Well, today we're talking about love. Love. What is love? Caring for somebody? That's right. So today, I want to share a book with you. This is Paisley's book, and I love it. It's called, What Will I Do With My Love Today? <coughs> All right? Drew, you want to come right here so you can see the pictures? Okay. <laughs> All right. Every morning, I wake up and say, what will I do with my love today? My heart's full of love. I have so much to spare. And all of God's creatures need kindness and care. One Sunday morning, I sang with the choir. Songs about love lifting higher and higher. We went out for ice cream, and when I got mine, Dad paid for the next person standing in line. I helped out my neighbor by pulling up weeds to prepare her new garden for all kinds of seeds. While we got groceries, I sang Mama's song, You Are My Sunshine, and my dad sang along. When we got to the chorus, a boy stacking beans started dancing with girls buying ripe nectarines. I heard a high note from somewhere near the spinach my teacher, Miss Bird, gave a big Broadway finish. I gave her a hug and my mom said, see that? Sing your love to the world and more love will come back. Sure enough, mom was right. When I checked in my heart, I found even more love than I had at the start. I wanted to share it. I needed a way. And then I saw a big sign, Pet Adoptions Today. I saw a sweet puppy whose big funny feet made a thunderous noise as she ran up to me. Puppy hugs, puppy kisses, such wet tail wagon wiggles. Hello, thunder pup, I said in between giggles. You're my pup, you're my person. We're made for each other. I hugged her and told her that I would always love her. Mom and Dad signed some papers with lots of big words to make it official. She's mine and I'm hers. We skipped down the sidewalk and played at the park, ate dinner and headed home just before dark. The afternoon sun turned to rain clouds and lightning and poor little thunder truck found it so frightening. She trembled and whimpered and she jumped in my bed and pulled up the blankets to cover her head. Is that how y'all feel? I crawled in beside her and gave her a hug. I got you, I said. Don't be scared, Thunder Pup. When I was a baby no bigger than you, my mommy and daddy adopted me too. You see, Thunder, families don't all look the same or talk like each other or have the same name. Sometimes extra love in your heart and your home is waiting for somebody who's all alone. No matter how life has brought us together, adoption means family and families forever. We had lots of love in our family before, but with you, Thunder Pup, we can love even more. With Thunder Pup helping, I started to find a lot of new ways to be caring and kind. She helped clear the table while I did the dishes and made sidewalk art with paw prints and tail swishes. I showed her the garden where I planted seeds. The rain helped them blossom, I said. Look at these. Marigolds, daffodils, violets of blue. We decided to take some to Miss Bird at school. Sharing love is like planting a seed that will grow. Much wilder and stronger than you'll ever know. The more love you give, the more love there will be. Love as much as you can every day and you'll see. That's exactly what Thunder and I like to do. Look, we put lots of love here in this book just for you. So 
give flowers to friends and sing songs on the street. Find a way to bring joy to each person you meet. Jump out of bed every morning and say, what will I do with my love today? Did y'all like that book? So how? What's love? Exactly. How can we show love? Your mama? You love your mama? Yeah. Yeah. So how can we show that love? By helping somebody? All right. So this week, yeah, that'll help. So this week you have homework. This week, I want you to find somebody that you can help. Okay? Okay? Can y'all do that? All right. Who wants to say a prayer today? Robinson, Virginia Stafford Johnston, Vivian Shadden, Barbara Wesley Gary, Rob and Donna Bowery, Louis Aycock, Catherine Ashcraft, Shiloh Williams, <coughs> Stephen Powell and the mission or Stephanie Powell, sorry, Stephanie Powell and the mission team, Mary Henderson, Lanny and Delia Travis. Francis and Timmy Bond, Ella Scott, Debbie Hayes, Brenda Woodyard, <coughs> Leah Cat Catherine Anderson, Clay Young, Shirley Young, David Treadway, Janet Howell, Gloria Griffin, Dale Webster, Wanda Snyder, Don Todd, Robbie Lassiter, Carolyn Sue Hill Campbell, Bubba and Anita Porter, <coughs> Glenn Hosey, Mackie Fur, Jim Oliphant, Carolyn and Mar Mary Wilkinson, <coughs> Mary Hendricks McDowell, Kenneth Guest, Jerry Kelly, Alan and Pam Wildshoots, Fern King Williams, Bonnie and Curtis Petty, John Ryle, Pam Catlett, Garrett Howard, Agnes and Earl Whitson, Magnolia, Adrian, and Ryan Doughty, Judy Bellamy and Debbie Gordon, Dale Tyner, Matt Oxner, Lee Scarborough, Hazel Story, Jim and Theda Bennett, Berkeley Leonard, Helen Harper, Laurel Coker Catlett, and Sherry Lynn Kimmer, Gail Gatlin, Linda Moton, Kat Katie Jacks, Charles and Barbara Robinson, 
Rebecca Ferguson, Hewitt Perkins, the list. Drew Perkins, Becky Mott, Russell Lee, Mary Blush, Karen Reed, Reed Williams, Ian Miller, Miranda Rocca, Chance Adams, Jim Gateway, Bubba and Jamie Morris, Linda McGill <coughs> and Alex Lee, Jared Bannon, the family of Jerry George. Do we have any other prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Joe Tom Cunningham has been moved to a rehab in Little Rock. Joe Todd Cunningham? Joe Tom Cunningham. Joe, okay, Joe Tom, Tom Cunningham has been moved to a rehab in Little Rock. Yes. Anyone else? I called Shirley Burke uh, yesterday. She said she might just come home tomorrow and ask him what God told you to do. She was saying, and she didn't know. Okay, so Shirley Birch, you get to come home tomorrow? That's what she said. I don't know. All right. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Magnolia Dolly got to come home. Okay. Um, she's still needs our prayers, but she's home with her family. Um, and Berkeley Leonard is still in the hospital and she needs our prayers. Right. Our prayers of Thanksgiving. Winston Turner's emergency eye surgery went well. Catherine Ashcraft's surgery went well as well. Most of Ian Miller's tests look good, and he has grown two inches since February. They ask that we continue to pray. Briggs Russell's son of Michael and Casey Russell was born Thursday. And Stephanie Powell and the mission team got to Uganda. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. After months of Kitty and Harriet, Barbie and I worked on it. We finally got our double doors in the food pantry, which is going to allow us to move um, pallets directly into the building. May have a few kinks to work out, but that was without the support of the church, we could have done that. Awesome. Thank you, church, for the new doors. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> I want to invite you into a prayer room. Holy God, in the stillness of this moment, we approach your throne. God, we are so grateful for the opportunity to be here because you have called us your own. You have gathered us into this place as a community of faith, as an expression of Jesus' own body and person out into this community in which we reside. God, we can't help but feel the joy of your Holy Spirit as we gather here together, as we celebrate this time of worship. God, hear the joys in, in our hearts as we lift up to you the praises of our lips in this moment of worship, O oh God, where we approach you as your children, not for what you have done or can do for us, Lord, but just to be present with you in this moment, just to have this divine encounter, to open ourselves to your spirit, to know the fellowship of your son, Jesus Christ. God, we are amazed and awed by your presence. Lord, we come today lifting up the names of those that we read week upon week. Lord, some have been there a long time and some are brand new today. God, we know that our physical bodies break down over the course of time and that sometimes disease overtakes us. And yet, Lord, we know you to be the great physician. We know that through the power of your Holy Spirit that you can reach down and touch any one or every one of these people that we lift up this morning. And we ask today that your will be accomplished, that your healing would be poured out on them. God, we submit ourselves to your will, knowing that your will is directed toward our good. We pray for those in our community who have lost loved ones. God, we pray for those whose lives are still in the darkness of loss. 
Lord, whisper into our ear when we need to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Send us, Lord, to just be present. God, we pray for those in this community, in this broader world that are sick with COVID, even as we pray. Because we know that we're going to be living with this in perpetuity. And yet we rest in the sure and certain knowledge that we are held in your hand. That no one can snatch us from you. That we are beloved. That we are precious and that we are worthy. God, we pray for the souls of the unsaved. That through our witness in this community, through the light of Jesus Christ, alive and at work in us, that they might catch a glimpse of Jesus' face, that they might experience the touch of Jesus as we offer care and compassion. Lord, that they might know that you are with them in their hour of need. Send us. Here we are. We, your children, offer the prayer Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter the building or leave, we drop our checks or envelopes, our cash, into the plates as an act of solidarity as we come together around a common purpose. Your generosity has enabled us to purchase a really nice piece of playground equipment that's going to be going up in the fenced area. We'll be getting ready for WOW pretty soon, and these kids are going to have the opportunity to enjoy some new equipment, and that's because generosity. We thank you for that. Um, youth, get ready. We're going to be putting that together. It was all I could do to flip it up off the ground and into the back of the little white truck. Got it stored in the shed. We'll bring it in next week and start putting it together. And hopefully those kids will be enjoying it soon. So thank you for your commitment to be generous to this community. I want to invite you to stand as we sing the doxology. <coughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The hymn of invitation is Speaker 199, the sweet line by. Thank <laughs> you. 
seated. <clears throat> Last week we had a little foray into the letter to the Hebrews. Today's passage comes to us from the same book. This is Hebrews 13, verses 1 through 8, and verses 15 and 16. Hear these <laughs> words. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were there with them in prison, and those who were mistreated as if yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have, because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of the Lord to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess His name, and do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. This is the Word of God for us, the people of God. God. May God add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and the living out of this Word that we share. The author of this epistle, this letter to the church, is unknown. We don't know who it was, but most scholars agree that it was written to a Jewish community of Christians, likely living in Jerusalem somewhere around between 62 and 64 AD. So this would be before the destruction of Israel. And these believers, because they believed that Jesus was God's promised Messiah, suffered a great deal of persecution. Some of them were jailed. Some of them were tortured. Some of them um, were broken into and their things stolen. All of them were ostracized from the larger community. And many of them began to make incursions back into the synagogue worship in hopes that they would be able to reestablish their position in their community. The writer of this book wants them to receive a word of encouragement, to know that God sees them and that God loves them, and most importantly, to be encouraged in their, in their belief in Jesus Christ. The writer wants them to know that Jesus is superior in every way to everything else that God has ever used to reach out through a prophet through his law, through, throughout history, Jesus is superior to everything. Jesus is superior to the angels that in Deuteronomy 33 were purported to hand the tablets of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, to Moses. Jesus was superior to Moses in his revelation of God and God's ways. Jesus is superior to the law of Moses being its fullest expression in human experience. Jesus is superior to the high priest that still makes sacrifices in the temple during the day that these original hearers heard this letter. Jesus doesn't have to make sacrifice for his own sins before he can come into the temple on Yom Kippur on the Day of Atonement to make atonement for the sins of the entire nation. Jesus is, the writer of Hebrews tells us, the perfect high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Not in the order of Aaron, because Aaron's priestly family from time to time would break away and break God's law, but in the order of Melchizedek, the king of Salem who meets Abram after he goes out and, and takes back his nephew Lot and all of Lot's household and goods from a king that had raided where Lot lived and, and took them off into captivity. And, and Melchizedek is the king of Salem, 
the king of peace. That's what Salem means. He is the priest of God most high. In, in the Psalms, it says to Messiah, to that person who sits on David's throne, I've made you a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. Jesus is superior to the priest. And Jesus, once and for all sacrifice, is superior to every animal that was ever killed and blood spilled for the sins of Israel. Jesus is superior. His, his sacrifice is once and for all. And in this text today, we should be encouraged because the writer is writing to this local church. And by extension, he's writing to this expression of Christ's body here at Marvel United Methodist Church. Where we gather week upon week. We gather with all of the all of the busyness that's going on around us to get ready and hustle kids here. We're, we come together um, with sometimes mi mixed motives. Sometimes we come here out of a sense of responsibility or because we want to see our friends. But God is gathered here for the purposes of speaking His Word directly into our lives in order that our hearts may become pliable and molten in His hands. God wants to do a transformative work of grace in the hearts of every person in the, in the sound of my voice. Can I get an amen? amen? Are we all together here? God wants to do something to me and to you. And the church is here and for a variety of functions. The church is gathered here to worship. And this should be an act of Praise and adoration toward God, where we pour the totality of ourselves out before God, where we know that He sees us just like we are, not with through that facade that we build and promote and retail to the entire world. God sees me as who I am. And He loves me anyway. And that's pretty amazing to me. And so we gather here and worship. Another function of the church is to gather for fellowship. And here in a couple of weeks, when we have church birthday, we're going to gather in fellowship. I don't know about you, but I really miss that part of what we do as a church. Because some of you make really good pie. <laughs> and I really get to talk to people and sit down with people and get to know people in a way that, that I don't get otherwise. When we break bread together, when we experience fellowship together, there is a there is a community, there is a feeling there. I can become more that person that God wants me to be, and I can love you more in the way that God wants me to love you and to, and to serve you. That's why I love you so much. I mean, that's the true confession of the preacher whose primary joy throughout my ministry has always been youth ministry. Because I get to know these kids. They're, they, don't, they don't feel a need to, to put up so much of that facade to, for the preacher to care about them. In fact, they can learn pretty quickly that they can just be themselves. And I'm a pretty plain spoken person. And if something needs to be said, I say it. And if it burns their ears, I'm sorry. But I still love them. We gathered this week. We only had five youth. But two of those kids were visitors. To those kids, I know their parents. I know the kids. They've been to my house. They've stayed the night in my home. They broke bread with us. And they felt very comfortable coming to youth group. And the youth group showed them a great deal of, of grace and hospitality. And they enjoyed themselves, and they're coming back. And so as we get ready for church birthday, I want you to be thinking about who you're going to invite. Who are you going to show hospitality to? Who are you going to set a table with? Who's going to taste your coconut cream pie for the very first time? And go, this is the place for me. You might not know this, but a, a, a beautiful saint, Miss Virginia. Miss Virginia made the world's best coconut cream pie. And you know how I knew that? Because every person in that church, when the amen was said for the blessing, went straight for that pie. Because they knew if they didn't, they weren't going to get any of it. I referenced that pie when I preached our memorial service. because, And everybody laughed because they knew about that pie. And we are gathered as a church body for ministry. 
And so I want to ask you, what's your ministry? Some of us, we serve at the food pantry. Some of us um, are present at the Double Quick um, or the BFT. Um, some of us are, we're, we help other folks. We, we greet them when they come to our community. We make them feel at home. We befriend them. Um, some of us serve in differing ways, but all of us should be serving in some way. Can I get an amen? Maybe you're serving through your work. Maybe you're bearing witness um, at your school. Maybe you are that compassionate person who is willing to get in touch with a preacher when somebody close to you or somebody maybe that you just work with has passed away and they need somebody to preach a funeral or, or visit the bereaved family. I'm your man. I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. And I appreciate the fact that there are so many people in this community and in this congregation that love the Lord and serve other people. Because that's what Jesus Christ did. Can I get an amen? Jesus said he came not to, not to, not to be served, but to serve. That's our, that's our response to God's grace. That's how God works in our midst. Psalm 1611 says, You will make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Do you know that God wants you to take joy? He wants you to be happy when you come in here. He doesn't want you to have a long face. He doesn't want you to be preoccupied with what you're going to be doing after church or where you're going to go to dinner or, or who you're going to eat with. God wants you to be happy. You know how you can be happy in this life? By being content with what you have. By sharing what you have with other people. You know how you can, you can live in a really good life, a full life, the abundant life is what Jesus says? By being a person with joy in your heart. By being someone that people like to be around. Miss Jo Turner is one of those people. Me. I love to be around Miss Jo. I miss her for my neighbors so much. I cannot wait till that parsonage is finished. Because she and I have, we've had long, just, I am not our minister, but she is my friend. And I have ministered to her. I want you to know how much God loves you and how much He wants you to have that joy in your heart. God wants you to have peace. In a world and in a time and in a culture where there seems to be no peace, Christ says, my peace I give to you. And I don't give to you as the world. My peace isn't contingent on the circumstances or what's going on around you or what's going on in your family. It's not contingent on your health. It's not contingent on who you're with or where you're at. God's peace passes all understanding and Jesus gives us that as a gift. And we can most experience that peace when we can lay aside some of our busyness and our, and our culture of acquisition and our blue screens that are great things but also consume a great deal of our time and just be people. Just relate to Jesus. I mean, open yourself up. Open God's Word. Read that for yourself because that's a way for God to speak to you. Take some time and set aside for some prayer. And while you're praying, make a moment to listen for the voice of God. When you open up that word, expect God to say something to you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants to speak to you. Come on. Come on. God wants to speak to you. God wants to speak to you. Now, I hope... That God speaks to you on a Sunday morning when you're in a Sunday school class, when you're having a conversation with your uh, fellow congregants. I hope that God speaks to you when we preach on Sunday morning or when we sing a, a hymn that means something to you. I hope that you experience the peace of Christ that passes all understanding. God wants you to have joy. God wants you to have <coughs> peace. God wants you to have love. Jesus said to his disciples on the day just before he was arrested, love one another. As I have loved you, so you should love one another. 
Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, love, that kind of love is not a feeling. It's an action, okay? It's not a noun, it's a verb. It's something we do, and sometimes it is hard. Sometimes it's very hard. To, but it's a choice that we make. And, and I will promise you that if you can find the joy that God wants you to have, if you, can, if you can live in the peace that passes all understanding, if you can share that love that's been shed abroad in your heart with other people, that people around you will begin, they'll begin to want something that you've got and they don't. I remember before I became a preacher, before barely I was a barely a member, I got I got kind of I got kind of voted by default to lead this Sunday school class. And I took that seriously and I studied the lesson and I prepared and I wrote notes and I used all the time that was allotted to me. And I was aggravated if I didn't get to say everything that I wrote down. That's 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 hubris, I've come to understand. God can speak without using my voice. God can speak without using yours. And someday, one day I was in the Sunday school and this friend of mine who's now gone on to be with the Lord, his name is Dorman Dell. Dorman looked at me and he said, he said, son, I don't know what you got, but I sure want some of it. People should be seeing you in the same light. They should be looking at you and seeing Jesus. They should be experiencing Jesus firsthand in the way that you conduct yourself, in the way that you treat other people, in the way that you share the hope that we have, in the way that you live your life. Because eternal life is more than just life that never ends. Eternal life is a life that is enduring, that is, has meaning and purpose. And if you're just wasting away your days, saying, I'm old and I'm retired and there's nothing I can do, there is, if you have breath in your lungs, if you have blood coursing through your veins, God has a purpose for you to be here. And you should be finding out what that is. I spoke to a young person not long ago who had gone through a very devastating accident and still recovering from the effects of that. And I reminded them and reminded myself that God had a purpose for having saved that person's life. And, and I hope to be a part of their finding that purpose. And I want you to know that I pray today that God has melted down that stony flint that some of us carry around calling hearts. And that he's made it something pliable in your hands. I pray that it is glowing with the power of God's Holy Spirit. And that as you leave this place today, you go out of here with hearts on fire to do three simple things. Do no evil. Do no harm. To do good and to stay in love with God. In the name of God and Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you pray with me? <laughs> Holy God, we sense your presence. And for some of us right now, Lord, our joy and our peace and our love is like dry bones in the valley with no substance, no flesh, no life in us, Lord. But we know you to be a God of new beginnings, of new life. And so, God, recreate in us the joy of our salvation. Give us that peace that passes all understanding. And let us be peacemakers, O oh Lord. And pour your love into us, out of us, in spite of us. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Come on, page number 156. I love to tell a story. Let us stand together. <laughs>
ready to sing all four verses. <laughs> I guess Sam was too. Now I gave you discretion, which is a dangerous thing. That's fine. Just because we had all the verses didn't mean we had to sing them. <coughs> May the flame on that torch be a sign and a symbol unto us that God wants to live and breathe and work in and through us through the power of his Holy Spirit. May that joy, peace, and love be kindled in you all, us all, anew. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Amen.